It's another turbulent week in South Korean politics. Pressure is mounting on the country's president as he clings on to power following last week's dramatic but failed declaration of martial law. And overnight, officials raided the president's office and opposition politicians vowed to hold another vote to impeach him and his allies. CBC's Mark Harkasal is back with more on this story. So, Mark, what's the latest? Well, Natasha, the latest chapter of all this seems to show different security and law enforcement forces basically working against each other. So police in South Korea tried to make their way into the presidential office compound yesterday to get various information and evidence related to that martial law declaration last week. You, we do know that President Yoon suk Yul is being um, named a suspect on charges of insurrection and mutiny in relation to that. Police accuse him of being the mastermind behind it. However, they were blocked by the presidential security service who cites a law saying that they have the right to block anyone trying to get in to sites like this, sites that would contain state secrets without getting approval from those in charge of those areas. Obviously, the person in charge of that area would be President Yoon. So you can see where the issue is here. They're not going to get permission to do it. However, the standoff was eventually broken off when members of the Presidential Security Service did give police, quote, very limited documents to use in their investigation. Now, uh, President Yoon is He's also been banned from leaving the country. This is the first time this has happened to a South Korean president. Certainly, they're trying to keep him under lock and key after everything that happened last week. In addition to the president being investigated in all this is his former defense minister, Kim Jong-un. Uh, he was arrested early Wednesday. He becomes the first president or the first person rather arrested in connection with this investigation. And reports suggest that when he was detained, he tried to take his own life, but he was stopped by corrections officers. Uh, he's fine. He's in stable condition. Uh, well enough, certainly, that he was able to withstand five hours of questioning, apparently, from investigators. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know what came out of that, certainly. But uh, he, as I mentioned, the first one to be arrested. Uh, it's alleged that he played a key role in the rebellion and is one of the people who convinced President Yoon to do it. Now, uh, as far as how people who live in South Korea are doing, uh, it is very evident, as you can see from the footage, that protests are still happening. They're not letting this go easily. It's been a week now, and they're not letting down. Reuters spoke to several people at those protests over the course of last night. And here's what they had to say about the current situation. So you can certainly see some cynicism building among certain people. Interesting to note that young lady mentioned that she thinks some of the opposition lawmakers might be working with or for North Korea. And that actually mirrors and echoes what President Yoon initially said when he launched martial law in the first place about the opposition, which didn't allow him to push his agenda through parliament. So it's clear that that messaging might be working with some, or there are people out there who feel the same way. Speaking of North Korea, they, for the first time, you saw a brief blip of uh, their news coverage there, for the first time actually reported on this. Uh, but they're being very cautious in their reporting. The sources down there say that they don't want to uh, give too much uh, to anti-sentiment reporting because they don't want people to get ideas in the North. The story is so fascinating, so complicated. So initially when the martial law was declared, it didn't even, the idea of it didn't even last a few hours. Yeah. Immediately the people took to the streets. You can see they're still out there now. The, the police moved in, the opposition said no, it got voted down immediately. But that threat of it has become so permanent in terms of how people are responding. So they tried to impeach the president. It didn't work. So uh, the opposition is saying they're still going to keep trying. Is that right? Still going to keep trying. Six hours of martial law is enough to you know, change people's lives, right. uh, evidently. And so they're going to keep trying. The next attempt is likely set for Saturday.